Hello readers, yes I have a suitcase full of books from Value Village. This is not even a clickbait title, this is actually very heavy. I think I just pulled something in my arm again. I'm gonna have to stop holding up books like this. But yes, this is a suitcase, like a mid-size travel suitcase full of books. And the irony, or the funny part is, is that that's just not the only amount of books in this haul. There's also a full bag, reusable bag of books and another extra stack laying somewhere. So we're just gonna get right into this big secondhand Value Village book haul and I hope you enjoy and I hope I'm not doing this ever again. Hello readers, welcome back to Sandra is Booked where I talk all things book and bookish related. As I said, there is a big, big, big suitcase of books and I'm just gonna get right into it so we don't waste time. And luckily enough, everything is mostly by the same author. So that's gonna make my job 10 times easier. So let's open this suitcase up and let's see what we have in here. So the suitcase is currently on my lap. So if you see me looking down, that is why. So, oh, okay, I found the, wait a minute. Oh no, it's on the wrong position. It's opening like this and covering my face. Let me just switch a room. Ow, 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 ow. ow. Kind of doesn't help, but. We'll start with the most exciting book of this haul and it's The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. And the reason why this is so exciting is because I was scrolling to TikTok literally the day, the day before I went to Valley Village and I saw this book recommended as one of the older kind of dark academia books and it's so hefty. I did not expect it, it to be this hefty and my cover is a bit battered but it doesn't really show but it just looks so amazing. It reminds me of the secret history in the way that the cover is formulated and yeah. This has something to do with a successor and it's set in school and there's something evil that lurks the halls or something like that. And honestly, I don't even want to know any more than that because I'm just like so ready to like jump in at any given time. So yeah, obviously it's going to be set in New England and it has to do even with Dracula, I believe. So that's really intriguing. Then I got Forrest Gump because I've never watched a movie and I've had people tell me that I really need to my whole life. So I really wanna read the book and then watch the movie finally. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. There is the movie tie-in in on the book cover. So yeah, I just saw it on there and I said, okay, let me just read this. And it looks pretty short, so I'm excited and I'm excited to finally freaking watch the movie before people keep on yelling at me. Then we have Tuesday Night in 1980 by Molly Prentice. Molly Prentice and it is a actually it's an advanced reader's copy so I don't even know why they're selling this. It's actually not legal to sell this. But let me just read you um, what this is about. I do believe it's about queer folks in the 1980s but I could be wrong so let's just read the back copy. Welcome to Soho. On, at the onset of the 80s, a gritty quickly gentrifying playground for artists and writers looking to make it in, in the big city. Among them, James Bennett, a synesthetic art critic for the New York Times whose unlikely con condition enables him to describe art in profound magical ways and Raul Angeles, an exiled Argentinian painter running from his past and the dirty war that has developed his country. As the two men ascend in the downtown art scene, dual tragedies strike, and Earth is faced with a loss that, ac ac that acutely affects his relationship to life and to art. It is not only they are inadvertently brought together by Lucy Allison, a small town beauty and Raul's muse, and a young orphan boy sent mysteriously from Buenos Aires that James and Raul are able to discover some semblance of what they've lost. 
Okay, so maybe it's not what I thought it was, but it does sound really interesting and a lot of things have happened in the 1980s. But I'm honestly so excited to read this now that I know that it has to do with the art scene in Soho, New York in the 80s. So this has just bumped uh, top of my list. Then I got Woman Talking by Miriam Toys. Toys, I believe? Uh, I'm not too sure. I have never read a book by her and I do believe that she is a Canadian author and yeah, I heard great things about this one and I'm going to read briefly the synopsis. It says, on a quiet June morning in 2009, August Epp sits alone in the hayloft of a barn, anxiously bent over his notebook. Soon, eight women, ordinary grandmothers, mothers and teenagers, will climb the ladder into the loft and the day's true task will begin. This task will be both simple and subversive. August, like the women, is a traditional Mennonite and he has been asked to record a secret conversation. Yes, I love it, indigenous literature. I No, I need to read this right now. And speaking of indigenous literature, I got another Canadian indi indigenous literature and it's Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh and it actually won or it was one of the selection in the 2016 Canada Reads. And this one was what? Global Mail best book. So yes, then we have Birdie and Birdie says here, a big beautiful Cree woman with a dark secret in her past. Bernice Birdie has left her home in Northern Alberta to travel to Gibson, BC. She is on something of a vision quest looking for family, for home, for understanding. She is also driven by a leftover teenage desire to meet Pat John, Jesse from the Beachcombers, because he is, as she says, a working healthy Indian man. Birdie heads for Molly's Reach to find answers, but they are not the ones she expected. So, oh my god, I love Indigenous Lit. I took a whole section in school and I just, I can't wait to read these. And I love that these books are from Canadian authors and Canadian Indigenous authors as well. So these are definitely bumped at the top of my list. So then we have Dr. Faustus by Christopher Mar Marlowe. So then we have Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Honestly, I have no idea what this is about like at all like I've seen it I know it's a classic and I honestly am too tired to read the blurb on this one so obviously every book is gonna be linked down below for you guys to look in detail but I do believe this is a play and it's about black magic honestly let me just stop being lazy let me just read the blurb in this brilliant dramatization of the false story a scholar sells his soul to the devil in exchange for limitless knowledge and powerful black magic. Yet he remains unfulfilled, serving as a warning to those who would sacrifice every everything sacred for a mere earthly gain. Okay, sounds good. I like it. Following on the theme of a uh, classic, I also have Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. And again, no idea what Shirley is about, but... I've just been collecting the Bronte sisters' works throughout the last few years so I can read them. I've read so far Woodering Heights and I, the next one I really want to pick up is Jane Eyre obviously and then I'll make my way to the other novels. Then I got The Iliad by Homer. Before anyone says anything, I obviously read this before in class but I love these Penguin Classic Edition and I've never read the translation by Robert Eagles yet so I want to read this and you know refresh my memory and then I want to read the Odyssey because I never read the Odyssey although I know the story and then I'm gonna read some Greek myth retellings that have been published in the last few years then I got two books about blogging because they were just there so I figured I might as well just get them and I got the golden rules of blogging and when to break them by Robin Houghton and then I have Born to Blog, Building Your Blog for Personal and Business Success, One Post at a Time by Mark W. Schaefer. So yes, these are the two books. And honestly, don't know anything about them. They seem short and to the point and maybe they're good. So if they're good, you'll hear from me on my blogging channel, more like the you know self-help channel, which is Sandra Shelf, always linked down below. But if they're not good, I'll still talk about them and you know, try to 
break my own opinions about blogging. And then I got Born Standing Up by Steve Martin and it says a comics life and obviously it's an autobiography of Steve Martin and I think he's a very interesting individual and human being and he's actually written quite a few things and I have his other book called Shop Girl and I really want to read that book and it's, it's, not, it's actually fiction. So I just want to learn more about his life and what he has to say because he's really funny but the thing is people that are really comedic and funny they usually lead this like very deep and serious inner life so it could i could be wrong but that's normally what's the case so can't wait to read this then i got sea biscuit by laura hildenbrand and it's an american legend and i heard such great things about this book and this book has been referenced a lot in the season one of you you know the netflix show so i just really want to know what this book is about uh i'm pretty sure it's about a horseback rider and i don't know if this is like based on a true story i think it's based on a true story because there's actually a picture so yes maybe it's a biography and it says uh it says here he was a cultural icon a world-class athlete a champion who triumphed over terrible handicaps to become a legend of the racetrack. No other racehorse has rivaled Seabiscuit's fame or his sway over a nation's imagination. Now, Laurel Hill, Hillenbrand, I know who I know this author from. She's the one that did the book Unbreakable, the one that had that actor and Angelina Jolie, I believe. That was a really good historical movie. I haven't read the book, but I think this is the author, the same author. Anyways, Laura Hill and Brand unfolds the spellbinding story of this marvelous animal, the world he lived in. Oh, it's about the animal and the men who stake their lives and, fortu and fortunes on his dazzling career. A riveting tale of grit, grace, luck, and an underdog's stubborn determination. Sea Biscuit is an American classic. Cool. Not the type of thing I would normally read, but it seems so interesting that I actually want to read this. Then I got American Psycho by Brett is Easton Ellis. And if you guys seen my older videos, you will know that I already have a copy of this book, but I always wanted to get this copy as well as the other copy that I got, the plain one, the white cover one. I'll insert an image here so you know what I'm talking about. But I like this one. It seems so psychotic. And yes, maybe I will read the book twice if I really enjoyed the first time. Or maybe I'll give away one of the copies. I don't know yet. But when I saw this, I had to pick it up. It was like my sign that I should read this this year. Then I have Rick Steves' Best of France. And this is so exciting. And it covers Paris, Normandie, De Loire, Dordogne, Provence, the French Riviera, and Burgundy. So yes, I cannot wait to go to this. I will literally read this. So happy, so excited. And I can't believe I found this copy just chilling there. And yeah, I, I, I'm just so happy. Not only was I lucky enough to find that France book, I also found the entire Gunslinger series by Stephen King. And I found them in the edition that I wanted to buy myself, which is these cute little editions, mass market paperback. And I have books one to seven here and i'm just so happy and i'm not gonna drop them um yeah they're in pretty good condition and i just can't believe that i came across them so i can't wait to one day binge read all of this i know they made a first movie i don't know if they're gonna make a second third fourth six seven movie but i can't wait to start reading this and then watch the movie as well so speaking of stephen king i also got finders keepers by stephen king it's part of the mr mercedes trilogy I don't know anything about it except that it's like a detective story with a murder, etc, etc. So I just need the second or I don't know if this is the second book. I just need one more book in that series and I can finally read them. And then we have Under the Dome by Stephen King. You know what's funny? I remember seeing the cover of this book when it came out back in the day. 
and I was a young kid and I was just so intrigued. I'm like, this cover seems so sick. I wonder what this is. I will never read a Stephen King book. I was young. I had no idea who Stephen King was when I was very, very young. So the tables have turned and now I want to read this more than ever. There is no blur, but I do believe it's like a post-apocalyptic book where there is a dome that is covering society. So I don't know anything else about this, but it seems pretty interesting and knowing Stephen King, it's always going to be fascinating. Speaking of Stephen King, I also found a copy of Unwriting by Stephen King and this is my second copy. I have my first copy, I read my first copy and that first copy pushed me to write 2000 words a day for at least a whole last month. So I really want to read this again, a second copy where I get to annotate and really like absorb it once more after what five six years of reading the, f the first copy that i have and yeah maybe it's gonna help me get more into my writing and feel inspired again and i remember he has some practical tips as well and it's a bit of an autobiography as well so i was just so happy i when i saw this this copy i'm like i need to get it even if i have it i need to get it similarly i knew it was meant to be because i found a copy of big magic by elizabeth gilbert and i had read this when this first came out and again it inspired my writing so much these are like two books that are constantly recommended when you want to write and you know write fiction autobiography whatever it is when you want to just lead a creative unapologetic life these are the book, two books that i always recommend and other people always recommend so when i saw these two i'm like this this was meant for me i have these copies i don't care it's a secondhand bookshop it's very cheap i'm gonna reread them and re-highlight them and maybe even compare my notes from the first round so i just got so happy and now i'm reading a book by stephen king and i'm reading a, uh, eat pray love by elizabeth gilbert because i want to read some of their works before going back into their autobiography writing book then i got the children's homer and it's the adventures of odyssey and the tale of troy and i think it's like a abridged version for kids so <laughs> Uh, I guess it's helpful and they have like little cute illustrations so I don't care I got this and I didn't know it this was what it was but um, it's a good refresher so why not then I got Beowulf by Seamus Haney Seamus Haney Seamus Haney I don't know I really don't know and uh, yes it's uh, it's composed towards the end of first mil it's composed toward the end of the first millennium of our era. It's the tale of a Scandinavian hero who saves the Danes from the seemingly invincible monster Grendel and later from Grendel's mother. He then returns on his own country and dies in old age in a vivid fight against a dragon. It's a poem. It's about the monstrous defeating it and then having to live in the exhausted aftermath. I don't know. I've never read this in school and I want to read this. And that's about it. Then I also got Dubliners by James Joyce. And this is 15 stories by James Joyce. And I heard some great things by James Joyce. And I have not yet read anything by James Joyce. So it's my time to remedy that. Then I got Good to Great, a business book by Jim Collins. And it says here, why some companies make the leaf and others don't. So I love business books. It's like a new passion of mine. I don't know how I've ever come to this point in my life, but I think it's good. I think it's good to diversify and to learn how to run your own business, especially if you're an online person, online spaces. So I heard great things about this. It says there's more than 600,000 copies sold. So I bet there's more that have been sold now. So I wanna see if I can learn anything from this book. There we have A Street Car Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. And honestly, Tennessee Williams, everyone knows Tennessee Williams, but I have never read Tennessee Williams. And it's, there is the movie with Marlo Brando. And as soon as I read this, as soon as I can watch the movie, and it's a play again i got a few plays in this haul and i'm so excited because i have not read a play since university i believe so it's time for me to fix that then i got a fun little book about the english language and it's writing the mother tongue from old english to email the tangled story of english spelling by david woolman and i just absolutely love books about writing and language and the evolution of writing and language especially of the english language so 
when I saw this, I was like, I need to get this. I And I love that it's short because it pushes me to actually read it. Then I got The Iron Woman by Ted Hughes. And this is actually a uh, children's book. And yeah, Ted Hughes was the husband of Sylvia Platt. And it's about the pollution on the earth and it's targeted for children. So I just, I just got curious and I want to see what this is about. And he was the poet laureate. So as much as some people might not like him, I don't even know my full conclusive thoughts on him yet. But I just want to read this just to see for the literature aspect. Then I got The Meaning of Human Existence by Edward O. Wilson and it says it's the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. This is like more like the philosophical search for the meaning of life, Nietzsche and all that. So yes, I like that it's very short and I can't wait to read it. Yeah, I keep saying that for every book but it is the truth. Then I got Looking for Alaska by John Green. Not that I have not read this book already twice but it's the special edition copy, so I really wanted it, and it's the hardcover. And I really want to reread Looking for Alaska, because the last time I read it, I was a teen. And then I watched the show, which destroyed me all over again. So I think, like, it's good to, like, keep on revisiting John Green's work, especially when you're a super fan like I used to be, and I still am. So, yeah. Then I got The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie and this is her short story collection and I heard great things about it and it's very literary and it's very poignant and I have not read her other book which was Americana but I think I'm going to be more likely to pick this up first and then read Americana. So yes, if you read this one or Americana by Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie, please let me know. I've read her feminist stuff, but that's about it. I haven't read her fiction yet. Then I have The Ballerinas by Rachel Capkill Dale. And honestly, I thought this was the movie that got adapted, but it turns out that I'm wrong. But it's about ballerinas and it seems like it's a thriller. It says, 13 years ago, Delphine Leger abandoned her prestigious soloist spot at the Paris Opera Ballet for a new life in St. Petersburg, taking with her a secret that could upend the lives of her best friends, fellow dancers, Lindsay and Marjo. Now, 36 years old, Delphine has returned to her former home and to the legendary Palais Garnier Opera House to choreograph the ballet that will kickstart the next phase of her career. And she hopes to finally make and she hopes to finally make things right with her former friends. But Delphine quickly discovers that things have changed while she's been away and some secrets can't stay buried forever. But yeah, like I said, thriller. And I kind of am fascinated by ballerinas, but I would never myself be a ballerina or like take a course or something. So yeah, it's just fascinating. I don't know. It's the whole concept of the way it's even represented in media that's fascinating, if you know what I mean. Then we have Waiting for Godot by, is it Godot or Godot? I don't know, by Samuel Beckett, and it's a tragic comedy in two acts. Yes, I don't think uh, anything I need to say else. I think everyone knows this uh, this play, but uh, never read it. So I'm gonna read it and it's very short. And again, another play, like I said, there's a lot of plays in this haul without even me realizing or remembering that I bought a lot of plays. And then we have Death in Venice by Thomas Mann and it's basically seven stories in total and it's about the author's life. Oh, I see a note here from the person that had it before. Morality, European soul. Is discontent, discontent or discomfort? Nothing else has been annotated though. That's a shame. It would have been interesting to read more annotation. I think this is like your typical like voyage to Europe and you know frigging life out type of thing. And I'm excited to see for myself if I enjoy this. I like the cover a lot. I feel like it's very poignant. And then I got another business self-help book and it's Lean In by Cheryl Sandberg and it says women work and the will to lead. So yes, as a woman entrepreneur, not really entrepreneur, but creator, I want to 
feel empowered so when i saw this i was happy because i've been looking for a coffee for a while okay we made it we somehow made it towards the end i know there was a lot to unpack here i don't even know how i left the store with that many books i feel like it was a mission but i completed it and i completed filming this book haul so i will complete editing it <gasps> everything just fell down oops and yeah I'm gonna go and take care of that but as always if you like this video like comment and subscribe all readers and non-readers are more than welcome on this channel my goal here is to help inspire you to read more books and as well to help you find your next favorite book so as always like comment subscribe love to have you here and everything will be linked down below and I also want to know your thoughts your opinions on these books on new books that you probably discovered if not you know old books that you've always have your eye on which books should i read next which book seemed the most intriguing to you have you read any stephen king because stephen king was the star of this haul all right guys i will uh fix that up and i will see you on the next book haul bye readers